Ribono shel olam, hinani omedet lefanecha, I am here, I am here. I stand before the open ark and the eternal scrolls of our people dressed in white light. I stand ready to enter Kol Nidre, to offer prayers that urge me to live better, kinder, ever present to the pain of others, to become a compassionate vessel, trustworthy, holding hope in the midst of despair. Hinani, I am here, I am here. I stand on the edge between earth and heaven, between what I know and what I can never understand, between life and life everlasting. Mortality hovers, a rippling presence, always there, lingering, waiting, holding. I am here. In a name. I am here. I stand resilient, determined, though I have been taken down forced to live a different way. The rhythm of life has been altered. Time unfolds and morphs, expands and stands still. I have been called to be present to pay attention. Am I worthy to pray with my people? May I be worthy to pray with my people? Hinani, I am here. We are here. Be seated. We read together on page nine. The human spirit is the lamp of God, searching out what lies within us. Guided by the flame of conscience on this sacred night, we search for truth. Shine your light upon us as we strive to serve you. May we find safety in your faithful love. We light the flame of healing and forgiveness on this atonement night. We give thanks for love. Source of blessing, eternal our God, you fill the universe with majestic might, giving us life, upholding the life within us, and bringing us to this time. Page 12. Tfilah <coughs> Zakam, a prayer for purity and worthiness. God, my creator and guide, as I seek purity of soul on this holiest of days, I contemplate your gifts of love and forgiveness. 
I know the perfect righteousness is beyond human reach. The earth overflows with pain caused by word and deed. The wounds we inflict are physical and emotional. The damage we do is spiritual and material. This night we remember the teaching of our sages. For transgressions against God, the Day of Atonement atones. But for transgressions of one human being against another, the Day of Atonement does not atone until they have made peace with each other. And so my heart aches within me. I am shaken to my bones. For nothing, not even death, can take the place of true repentance. Therefore, I offer this humble prayer. May I be worthy of grace, kindness, and mercy in your eyes and in the eyes of all human beings. I hereby forgive all who have broken faith by harming me physically or materially, or by using thoughtless, unethical, or malicious speech. Let no one be punished because of me, as I forgive those who have hurt me, so that others view me with favor and forgiveness. Let me always remember every aspect of creation is a sign of something greater than itself. You created my heart and my mind. I am grateful for the blessings of thought, feeling, and understanding, the gift of an inner will to act for the greater good. But thoughtlessness, a lack of sympathy, and self-centeredness have diminished my soul. On the bottom of page 13, together, Guide my creator and guide on this day of atonement. Let my fasting and other intentional acts of self-discipline make me attentive to repentance and forgiveness, to the potential of my soul, and to the holy purpose of my life.
on page 15. Kol Nidre, a chant that begins in a whisper and rises to a cry. On this night of promises remembered, each soul in solitude communes with the soul of the universe. God, from this day of atonement to the next, may we reach it in peace. All Israel makes these vows to turn from wrong, dishonesty, and greed to walk in the path of justice and right. And yet we know our weakness, how prone we are to fail. Help us to keep our word. Help us to act with humility and integrity. We seek pardon and forgiveness. We seek your radiance and light. Please rise. With one voice, assembled sages, past and present, declare, all may pray as one on this night of repentance. Let none be excluded from our community of prayer. With one voice, God and congregation proclaim, all may pray as one on this day of return. Let all find a place in this sacred assembly. Page 18, we read together the words of Kol Nidre. All vows, resolves, and commitments, vows of abstinence and terms of obligation, sworn promises and oaths of dedication that we promise and swear to God and take upon ourselves 
from this Day of Atonement until next Day of Atonement, may it find us well. We regret them, and for all of them we repent. Let all of them be discarded and forgiven, abolished and undone. They are not valid, and they are not binding. Our vows shall not be vows, our resolves shall not be resolves, and our oaths they shall not be oaths.
ונסלח לכל עדת בני ישראל ולגר הגר בתוכם, כי לכל העם בשגגה. All shall be forgiven, the entire community of Israel, and the stranger who lives in their midst, for all have gone astray in error. Slach na l'avon ha'am hazeh, k'godel hazdecha, v'cha'asher nasat ha'am hazeh mi'mitzrayim v'ad hena. Moses prayed to God, as you have been faithful to this people ever since Egypt, please forgive their failings now in keeping with your boundless love. And God responded, I forgive as you have asked. We read together on page 22. Chant your supplications to God in a melody that makes the heart weep, and your praises of God in one that will make it sing. Thus you will be filled with love and joy for the one who sees the heart. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Bidvaro Ma'ariv Aravim, Bechokma Poteach She'arim, Uvidvuna Mishane Itim, Umachalif Et Hazmanim, Umsader Et HaKochavim B'Mishmaro Tehem Barakia Kirtsono, Borei Yom Valayla, Golel Or Mipnei Choshech, Bechoshech Mipnei Or. Oh, 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 oh,
Olam Beit Yisrael Amcha Ahavta, together love beyond all space and time. Your love enfolds your people, Yisrael. We receive it in your teaching, your gift of Torah, sacred obligations, discipline, and law. So let us speak these teachings when we lie down and rise up, and find joy forever in your Torah and mitzvot. They are the very essence of our life, ours to ponder and study all our days. May we never lose or be unworthy of your love. Baruch Ata Adonai, Ohev Amo Yisrael, for you are blessed, the one who loves your people, Yisrael. Throughout the year, our actions condemn us. Throughout this year, our deeds are open to blame. But on this day, we rise above our human failings, fasting, praying, wrapped in white talitot. We stand like angels, reaching for the divine. On this one day, we catch a glimpse of what could be. We celebrate the better angels of our nature. And as we turn to page 36, we turn to a paragraph of the Ahafta we do not often do, but on this night, as we wear talitot traditionally, this prayer shawls this one night as the only night of the whole year, I invite you to chant along with Cantor Strauss Klein. <laughs> Tear to him, and where I am. 
Our sages taught, it is proper to mention the exodus from Egypt in our morning prayers and also at night. We celebrate the going out from Egypt in the morning light, full of confidence and vigor as we enter the new day. But in the evening, weary from the day's exertions, cast down and fearful at the coming of the night, what can the exodus teach us then? Our nighttime prayer brings hope and trust in the future. As God did not abandon our people long ago through the long, dark night of exile, so the Holy One will be with us in time to come. To stand by the one you love, that is the true essence of faithfulness, the meaning of emunah. So it is written in the Psalms, to proclaim your kindness in the morning and your faithfulness in the nights. Sing with joy in the mornings of your life when light surrounds you and the world seems beautiful and good. And in the evenings of your life, when you dwell in sorrow and the world seems dark, do not despair. page 43, the peace of wild things. Together, when despair for the world grows in me, and I wake in the night at the least sound in fear of what my life and my children's lives may be, I go and lie down where the wood drake rests in his beauty on the water, and the great heron feeds. I come into the peace of wild things. We do not tax their lives with forethought of grief. I come into the presence of still water, and I feel above me the day blind stars waiting with their light. For a time I rest in the grace of the world and am free. Baruch Ata Adonai, Haporei Sukkot Shalom, Aleinu Ve'alkolamo Yisrael, Ve'al Yerushalayim. On page 45. For on this day, atonement shall be made for you to purify you 
from all of your wrongs, and pure you shall be in the presence of Adonai. central prayers, the Amidah, a note about our Machzor, Mishkan and Nefesh. Ponidre is a night for honesty with our relationship with God. And within our congregation, we have people who are doubters and seekers, agnostics and atheists and believers. And in our hearts, we may have a similar spectrum of voices. In our Maksor are poetry and readings for all of these voices. You will find them on the gray background pages. Our unity can permit differences in perspective. But even before we engage in these words, I want to acknowledge that this is a service with so many words and sounds. Before turning to more prayers, I want us to first consider stillness and silence and to notice our breaths, deep breaths in and out. I want to try something that we have not done on Kol Nidre before, a couple minutes of silence. Meditation is not easy to accomplish in this kind of moment. It is a bit of a leap of trust, but it can be rewarding. To help, I invite you to focus on a single Hebrew letter, the letter Aleph, and just the Aleph. It is the letter at the very bottom on the right side of the Ten Commandments. Bottom right side. If you're able to just block out everything else but that one Aleph. Aleph is equal to one. It represents eternity, everything, wholeness, unity. Its energy is timeless and beyond measure. It is the infinite. The Aleph has three elements, the upper pointer, the lower pointer, and the diagonal connector. The Aleph is the letter of personal integration. It reaches and teaches us that when we are truly whole, 
Both dimensions exist in balance within our being, upwards to our aspirations and downwards to our reality. Breathe in deeply a few times and focus on the Aleph and let all else fade away for just a few moments. And one last thought. In any meditation, any time of intention and focus, you may at some point find that your mind has wandered. And that is the moment you might say, I can't do this. You might rationalize that you don't want to do this. You can beat yourself up for not focusing, or you can find at that moment simply to return to breath and to focus. That return is literally to shuva, turning to what is good. We take some moments now to focus our mind on the Aleph or to close your eyes and just breathe. When you are ready, we rise for the Amidah, page 48.
True joy in Jerusalem. May the sparks of David, your servant, soon grow bright enough for us to see a beam of light in the darkness, a promise of perfection. How do we sense God's holiness? Through righteousness. And so, in your holiness, give the righteous the gift of a vision bright with joy, a world where evil has no voice, 
and the roll of malevolence fades like wisps of smoke. Good people everywhere will celebrate the stunning sight of arrogance gone from the earth. Together, you and you alone, Adonai, will reign over creation upon Mount Sion, home of your presence, and in Jerusalem, a city set apart by you. As the psalmist believed, Adonai will reign eternally, your God, Zion, for all generations. Hallelujah. You are holy, your name is awe, there is nothing divine beyond you. As the prophet Isaiah taught, the source of all might is exalted through justice, the God of holiness made holy through righteousness. Baruch Ata Adonai, HaMelech HaKadosh. We continue now at our own pace, exploring this prayers and the poetry of the prayer book through page 79. Please be seated whenever you wish. Please join me in our prayer for peace, page 79. Grant us peace, your most precious gift, O eternal source of peace, and give us the will to proclaim its message to all the peoples of the earth. Bless our country that it may always be a stronghold of peace, and its advocate among the nations. May contentment reign within its borders, health and happiness within its homes. Strengthen the bonds of friendship among the inhabitants of all lands, and may the love of your name hallow every home and every heart. Inscribe us in the book of life, blessing, and peace. We praise you, O God, the source of peace.
Confessional prayers on this Yom Kippur day. Page 82, please rise. Together, our God and God of all generations, may our prayers reach your presence, and when we turn to you, do not be indifferent. Adonai, we are arrogant and stubborn, claiming to be blameless and free of sin. In truth, we have stumbled and strayed. We have done wrong. Ay, 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 ay.
these wrongs we are guilty together we betray we steal we scorn we act perversely we are cruel we scheme we are violent we slander we devise evil we lie we ridicule we disobey we abuse we defy we corrupt we commit crimes we are hostile we are stubborn we are immoral, we kill, we spoil, we go astray, we lead others astray. Page 86. Vidui Rabba, the long confession, for these sins, our God, we ask forgiveness. <laughs> Together, the ways we have wronged you deliberately and by mistake, and harm we have caused in your world through the words of our mouths. The ways we have wronged you by hardening our hearts, and harm we have caused in your world through careless speech. The ways we have wronged you through lies and deceit and harm we have caused in your world through gossip and rumor.
The ways we have wronged you openly and secretly and harm we have caused in your world by losing self-control. The ways we have wronged you through sexual immorality and harm we have caused in your world through consumption of food and drink. The ways we have wronged you by giving in to our hostile impulses and harm we have caused in your world through greed and exploitation. The ways we have wronged you through cynicism and scorn and harm we have caused in your world through arrogant behavior. The ways we have wronged you by hating without cause and harm we have caused in your world through offensive speech. The ways we have wronged you with a slanderous tongue and harm we have caused in your world through a selfish or petty spirit. For all these failures of judgment and will, God of forgiveness, forgive us, pardon us, grief to atonement. Please be seated as we turn to Slichot, Songs of Forgiveness, page 96. Ya'ale tachanunenu me'erev v'yavo shavuot mi'boker yira'e rinanotenu ad alev Together, let our needs rise up with the darkness, our cries with the rays of the sun. All day our prayer is before you, songs of joy and bliss till evening comes. May our voices soar at nightfall, our just deeds shine forth with the light. All day we await deliverance, fervent our hope for redemption till evening comes. Let our suffering ascend at twilight, our forgiveness with the break of dawn. All day we sigh from oppression, cry out for right and justice till evening comes. May there be refuge when night surrounds us, at sunrise safe haven for your sake. All day our words rise from a sea of sorrow, and they break in waves of atonement. Till evening comes. Shma Kolenu, page ninety-eight.
Responsively. Answer us, you who answered our mother Sarah in her old age. Together, our father Abraham on Mount Moriah. You who answered their son Isaac when bound upon the altar. You who answered Rebecca when she cried, Why do I exist? You who answered Jacob at Beit El, Israel shall be your name. You who answered Leah in her sadness. You who answered Rachel in her pain. You who answered Joseph in the prison house. You who answered the midwives, Shifra and Pua at the birthing stones. You who answered Yocheved's courage on the bank of the Nile. You who answered our fathers and our mothers at the Sea of Reeds. You who answered Moses at Sinai. 
I bore you on eagles' wings. You who answered the daughters of Zelophehad, who stood up for their rights before Moses and God. You who answered Elijah with a still small voice in the wilderness. You who answered the righteous ones before us, men and women of integrity and compassion. Answer us, please rise. Avinu Malkenu, Ha'er Lanu et Derech Hayenu. Avinu Malkenu, illumine for us the path of our life together. Avinu Malkenu, how shall we find this tip to take the less traveled by? Avinu Malkenu, how shall we come to know the purpose of our existence? Avinu Malkenu, how shall we learn not to live life in vain? Avinu Malkenu, how shall we get out of our indifference? Avinu Malkenu, how shall we distinguish between truth and falsehood? Avinu Malkenu, how shall we find the answers to our questions? Avinu Malkenu, how shall we gird ourselves with strength to seek answers? Avinu Malkenu, chanenu va'anenu, chazkenu va'amseinu, Ki v'cha v'imcha hatshuvot. Avinu malkeinu, be gracious to us, answer us, empower us, and give us courage. For the answers are both in you and with you. Avinu malkeinu, a prayer of protest. Avinu malkeinu, hear our voice. Some of us have cancer. Some of us lost strength of body. Some have lost memory and speech. Some of us are in pain. Some can't find work. Some of us bear the marks of human cruelty inside where the scars don't show. Some live with depression. Some battle addiction. So many feel alone. Some have known shattered marriages, trust betrayed, hopes destroyed. Some of us have lost the ones we love far too soon, and some of us have lost a child. All of us have seen suffering in our midst. All of us know the ravages of war, for which there are no words. Avinu Malkenu, why? Avinu Malkenu, are you there? Do you care? Avinu Malkenu, hear our pain, hear our anger, hear our grief. Avinu Malkenu, here is our prayer. Give us the strength to go on. Give us the reasons to get up each day. Give us purpose and persistence. Help us to fend off fear and hold on to hope. Help us to be kind. Don't make us bow or grovel for your favor. Give us dignity and give us courage. Avinu Malkenu, show us the way to a year of goodness. Renew our belief that the world can be better. Restore our faith in life. Restore our faith in you. Bottom of page 115.
Please be seated. I want to begin tonight a little lighter than I normally do. I look back over the years and every one of my Kol Nidre sermons begins with a very serious line, literally every single one. <laughs> Fair warning, I'm not letting us off the hook, we're going there, just not yet. And by the way, today I was driving in town and I passed this church and it had this sign outside, it said, everything is grave. And I couldn't believe it, it was so serious. But then when I got a little closer, I realized everything is grace. <laughs> and I realized I need better glasses. <laughs> One might think, when would be a time for a thoughtful look at where we are as a people in a country, if not tonight? But I have a sense, as we enter 5783, that we are tired of heaviness. We are weary. We are in need of comfort. Our patience for self-improvement is worn a bit thin. Our zeal for saving the world is just a tad tarnished. We just want to be where we don't even know what we want. Life has been a series of triaging and negotiating decisions, dealing with the pandemic as if we were each an epidemiologist, cleaning crew, judge, and jury, all wrapped into one. And there I go again, I've gotten a little serious. All right, I'll tell a joke. I recently heard about an usher for the High Holy Days. He greeted an elderly woman who was visiting. He gave her a prayer book and he walked her into the sanctuary. He asked her very politely, where would you like to sit? She answered, the front row, please. You're sure you want to do that, the man said. The rabbi can be a little boring. <laughs> the woman said, do you happen to know who I am? No, he said. I'm the rabbi's mother, she replied indignantly. <laughs> oh, do you know who I am? No, good, and he walked away. <laughs> I wanted to eat, three people told me not to do that joke. I'm just saying. I wanted to ease us tonight. <laughs> Enjoy the smiles, Enjoy. Because I wanted to ease us tonight into what I'm about to say. I pray it won't be boring. And I also pray that our weary souls will be able to hear this message. If we are honest, Looking at the tea leaves, if not the news, it feels like in 2022, we are at the edge of a precipice. As challenging as things are today, there are reasons to imagine things getting so much worse in the next few years. And you know the awful litany, climate catastrophe, a national reckoning with race and an ever-increasing class divide. America's eroding democracy and the shrinking of civic religion that binds us together. Autocracies, namely Russia and Iran, willfully sowing terror and destruction, raising the specter of larger conflicts and eroding global cooperation that was such the hallmark of the latter part of the 20th century and the steady rise of anti-Semitism to levels not seen since the Shoah. Keep breathing. I'm gonna stop there. I am an optimist by nature. And even I have to work on cultivating hope. I feel obligated to say that we tonight, in this year, cannot be naive. In the cycles of history, the world today is getting more dangerous. Tonight is not about how to address any of these forces of change that are greater than us. It is about how we create a personal practice of resilience and lean on the resources of our tradition. 
And tonight is the appropriate night to stare starkly at reality. If Rosh Hashanah is Hayom Harat Olam, the day of the world's birth, as I used to say without qualification, Yom Kippur, 10 days later, is the day of rehearsing our death. When all of the Torah scrolls were removed from the ark to begin Kol Nidre, we were meant to see that empty ark as waiting for us. The Hebrew word aron means both ark and casket. We look unblinking at that emptiness, which is recognizing our mortality, so that we can make the shifts in our behaviors and perspective to make our lives as worthwhile and whole as possible. Abigail Pogrebin, in her book and our community read, My Jewish Year, wrote, in previous years, I hadn't grasped what Yom Kippur entailed, besides a whole bunch of apologies. I put in my hours in synagogue thinking, all right, this is sufficient. I'm here, I'm listening, I'm reciting, I'm starving, dayenu. <laughs> she then learns that the true metaphor of Yom Kippur is about mortality and that the real work is much harder than just showing up. And she concludes, this new Yom Kippur mindset, you could die so live better, keeps blessings in high relief. So what are the ways to live better? The shifts of perspective and behavior that can help us stay hopeful, even gazing upon the stark landscape that I've painted? I want to offer tonight five paths. Path one, trust in the future. Two, Hold on to a moral compass. Three, don't give in to easy answers. Four, lighten up. <laughs> Five, pray for safety. Path one, trust in the future. A teaching by Rabbi Ed Feinstein. I learned my theology from rabbis and professors, but I learned more from my children. When my daughter was small, we had a bedtime ritual. Each night I tucked her in, sang prayers, shared a hug, attempted to sneak out of the room, and in a moment she began to scream. Abba, there's an alligator under the bed, a monster in the closet, a giant spider on the ceiling. I walked back into the room and looked under the bed. No alligator. I checked the closet, no monsters. I surveyed the ceiling, no spiders. Now go to sleep, tomorrow is coming, everything is safe, good night. We did this dance for an entire year until one night I stopped and asked myself, who is right? Whose description of the world is factually correct? The child afraid of alligators under the bed? Or the father who reassures her that tomorrow is surely coming? The child is correct. She doesn't know the names of the alligators under the bed. We know. We grown-ups know all about the violence and evil that surrounds us. Yet we still teach our children to trust. All loving parents do this. Even the most hard-boiled atheist whispers to the child, tomorrow is coming. You're safe tonight. Go to sleep. Kids make us all believers. This is the deep spirituality of parenting. And we all need this. A sense of trust that we are safe tonight and can go to sleep. It is not all up to us, and our worries will not help. As Nachman of Rotslav taught, the whole world is a narrow bridge. Kol ha'olam kolo gesher tsar ma'od. The principal thing is, as he wrote originally, do not be overly afraid. Don't freak yourself out. Don't be more afraid than is warranted. After all, if you are on a narrow bridge, it is appropriate to be a little bit afraid. That is a natural reaction. 
The principal thing is to be balanced and not react in such a way that won't allow you to keep on walking. That is bitachon, trust. To be on the narrow bridge and believe you will get to the other side, to sleep well through the night, despite the alligators under the bed. Path two, use your moral compass, but be flexible. I learned this message from Steven Spielberg's movie, Lincoln. There is a scene where the 16th president reflects on a lesson he learned while working as a surveyor. A compass, Lincoln says, will point you true north from where you're standing, but it's got no advice about the swamps and the deserts and the chasms that you'll encounter along the way. If in pursuit of your destination you plunge ahead, heedless of obstacles, you will achieve nothing more than to sink in a swamp. Then what's the use of knowing true north? Judaism gives us a true north, values and teachings that give us purpose. We are all created in God's image. We were redeemed from Egypt. We will therefore not oppress the stranger in our midst. We see the world as broken and in need of our partnership in repairing it. This moral compass, however, does not show us how we will get there. The swamps and deserts of policies and laws in the public square and of the day-to-day -day decisions in fam with family and friends in the private sphere all have pitfalls. All are messier and require negotiation and compromise. The important thing is to keep our moral compass pointing straight north and to do the hard work of navigating all terrains, listening to opposing voices, and then finding the paths forward that address the issues of the day with fierceness but flexibility. Path three, don't give in to easy answers. After trusting in the future and using our moral compass, path three comes at a crossroads and suggests a potential danger. It is also based in history, our Jewish history. We all know that our ancestors faced dark days, indescribable hardships, persecution over the millennia. But knowing is different from feeling. This summer, I read a book about Jews in 18th century Poland. When I ordered it after reading and review, I didn't realize that it was 960 pages. <laughs> Reading that much gets the heart to feel what the mind already knows. The book is called The Books of Jacob by Polish writer Olga Tokarczuk, who won the Nobel Prize in Literature in 2018 for this book. Tokarczuk is not Jewish, but managed to paint an authentic and frightening portrait of a Jewish community facing pogroms and how slowly, and in a way that felt realistic and relatable, Smart people started following a man who claimed to be the Messiah. This is all based on the true story of Jacob Frank, who, like his predecessor, the false Messiah, Shabbatai Tzvi, had thousands, thousands of followers. For years, I couldn't understand how people could give in to such ludicrous claims. But seeing some parallels between then and today's challenges, has helped me to open my eyes. When entire communities suffer, charismatic figures will offer opportunities that may feel good, but they are not based on the true north. Their answers may offer structure and even food on the table, but are not a sustainable solution and can be dangerous. Today, it is remarkable, for instance, that a significant portion of the Chabad community still believes that their previous leader, Rabbi Menachem Mendel Schneerson, is the Messiah. Some believe that he did not die. This phenomenon has happened a number of, number of times in Jewish history. In this case, however, it has led to an extraordinary network of selfless couples and families giving everything to serve our wider Jewish community 
including our youth on many college campuses. Their goal may be to bring back the Messiah, and we cannot be blind to differences in beliefs about women's roles, gender roles, and who counts as a Jew. But their actions are in many ways exemplary and are very different from the followers of Jacob Frank. When things get challenging and we feel powerless, we need to avoid easy answers, any kind of escapes, changes to religion that are self-serving or follow cult-like groups or individuals who will mislead and confuse. True answers are not easy. They are about the hard work of character development, such as through the ancient spiritual practice of Musar that helps us be better people for ourselves and importantly, for others. And the difficult work of tikkun olam, repairing our world through significant action that builds relationships in the broader community for our common good and addresses with creativity and innovation the challenges that we are facing. And this brings me to a change of direction, a fourth path, one that you might not expect to hear from a rabbi, especially on Kol Nidre. Path four, lighten up. A teaching, a mystic scholar, Rabbi Jonathan Omerman, once told Jeremy Kagan, who was a filmmaker and artist, who was just in a mess after a near-death experience. Meditate on a feather. Meditate on a feather, Jeremy Kagan repeated exasperately. Okay, feathers are strong, they're flexible, they're lightweight, ancient, dinosaurs had them, and they are, of course, the source of flight. He kept going on, but Rabbi Omerman saw that he was struggling, and with a twinkle, he looked up and said, lighten up. Suddenly, I got it. Let go of unneeded emotional and psychological brain baggage that weighs you down. His smile encouraged me to be easier on myself and others, to lighten up. We will be facing challenging days. And sometimes we can approach that reality with strength and courage, with character development and the focused efforts of tikkun olam. And some days we can just respond with a little levity. There is a reason Jews have been known for our humor. As Conan O'Brien once reflected, today is Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. By the way, Yom Kippur is Hebrew for, I have no writers today. We Jews have been known for our humor and also for our hope. Last year, I focused on this eternal light. The pole of the artwork reminds us of a thread, narrow but strong, which is the basis of the word for hope in Hebrew. Kav means thread, and tikva is hope. As long as there is a thread of possibility, there is reason to hope. Maimonides taught it is holding on to the plausibility of the possible and not the necessity of the probable that gives us hope. It is possible that we will find a way to navigate, a, navigate out of this pandemic. It is possible that scientists, politicians, innovators, and activists will make a significant dent in the climate crisis. It is possible that Putin will be defeated from within Russia, if not from Ukraine. It is possible that young activists in Iran will defy their leaders' awful crackdowns. It is possible that courageous leaders across the globe will thwart the tide of anti-Semitism. Golda Meir said, make the most of yourself by fanning the tiny inner sparks of possibility into flames of achievement. There are times we need to escape and lighten up. There are times we need to hold on to the possible and act. As William Stafford put it in his poem, the way it is. There's a thread you follow. It goes among things that change, but it doesn't change. People wonder what you are pursuing. You have to explain about the thread. 
but it is hard for others to see. While you hold it, you can't get lost. Tragedies happen, people get hurt or die, and you suffer and get old. Nothing you do can stop times unfolding, but just don't ever let go of the thread. Path five, pray for safety even and especially when we are not feeling safe. This last path is the path of letting go, not of the thread and not lightening up as an escape, but of the feeling that it is all up to us. It is a return to the first path of trust. If we can hold on to our compass and not give in to easy answers, and have a healthy sense of humor, prayer can truly help. Prayer is music. Prayer is poetry. Prayer is practice. It takes many forms. It is what allows us to breathe and feel comfort and connection. A prayer was added to our prayer book around the fifth century in Babylon at a time when the nighttime evoked fears of physical attacks that were rampant. The words from that prayer long ago remained throughout the centuries, repeated by many different communities facing different circumstances. Hashke Venu is our extension of the daily redemption prayer. At night, especially at night, we feel far from redemption and so we beseech. Hashkivenu Adonai Eloheinu l'shalom, v'hamidenu shomreinu l'chaim, u'frosalenu sukach lomecha. Grant, O God, that we lie down in peace and raise us up, our guardian, to life renewed. Spread over us the shelter of your peace. Guide us with your good counsel. For your name's sake, be our help. Shield and shelter us beneath the shadow of your wings. Defend us against enemies, illness, war, famine, and sorrow. Distance us from wrongdoing. For you, God, watch over us and deliver us. For you, God, are gracious and merciful. Guard our going and coming to life and to peace evermore. May we feel that sukach lamecha, that shelter of peace, as we face enemies, illness, war, famine, and sorrow, as we trust, nevertheless, in the future, as we live a life with a strong moral compass, as we not give in to easy answers, but work to improve our character and actions, as we try to approach dark times with levity, and then as we pray, Pray with all our spirit that God guard our going and coming to life and peace evermore.
We turn now to our concluding prayers. Alenu is on page 116. Please rise. Page 119, together. May the time not be distant, our God, when all shall turn to you in love, when corruption and evil shall give way to integrity and goodness, when lies and bigotry shall no longer enslave the mind, nor idolatry blind the eye. All created in your image, become one in spirit and one in friendship forever united in your service. Then shall your dominion be established on earth, and the word of your prophet fulfilled. Adonai will reign forever and ever. Page 121. This holy night concludes with memory. Our last thoughts always are of those we've lost. We miss them, especially tonight, yearning for their presence at our side. The service we have shared once was theirs. They spoke and sang the ancient words. They played, prayed, repented, and yearned for better lives as we have done. Flawed in their deeds, imperfect in their faith, they still drew strength from their tradition as we seek fortitude in ours. What was good and beautiful in their lives once gave us joy and now inspires us to reach higher. The knowledge that they loved us deeply brings comfort to our hearts. So we light candles of remembrance and gratitude and we speak this timeless truth, zichronam libracha, their memory is a blessing now and forever. We pray that their goodness will live on in our lives, planting seeds of kindness and hope for generations to come. As our thoughts turn to loved ones whom death has taken from us in recent days, those who died at this season in years past, our hearts open as well to the wider circles of loss in our community, in our world, wherever grief touches the human family. Zichronam Livracha, may their memories be a blessing in this new year and always. If you are a mourner in a period of mourning, mourning a recent death, or remembering a yard site today, 
I invite you to stand that we may recognize you and offer you comfort. As we remember those who have passed away in recent weeks, Bernice Bunny Garnick, Susan Sue Levy, Mitchell Kvasnik, Betty Mars, Bernine Rudolph, Harold Smith, David Wise, Stanley Wolfson, Sylvia Strobing Walken. We remember those who passed away in the last year, remembered by their children. Patsy Duarte Albert, Walter Baum, Sue Gordon, Joseph Joe Kahn, Diane Mast. We remember those whose yard sites we observed this evening. June Barrows, Ludwig Baum, Anna Bronstein, Sidney Cohen, Francis Kahn, Ella Daskal, Saul Ellis, Natalie Ruth Alperin, Alexander Engel, Dennis Engel, Florence Finkelstein, Myra Funis, Myra Greenberg, Saul Kahn, Harold Kaufman, Norma Keppitz, Benjamin Levin, Max Levy, Abe Oxman, Philip Perling, Joseph Ross, Wesley Soul, Mordechai Weisberg, Sarah Weisberg, Benno Wolf. May their memories be a blessing to all who love them and to their communities, as together we rise to praise God in the Mourner's Kaddish, page 122. Yitgadal <laughs> Ba'agala u'bizman kari imeru, amen. Yehe shemei rabba mevarach ve'olam ulo me'omaya. Yitbarach ve'yishtabach ve'yitbarar ve'yitromam ve'yitnase. Ve'yithadar ve'yitadle ve'yithalal shemei dekudsha v'rihu. Le'ela u'ne'ela minko birchata v'shirata. Tushvechata v'nechamata. Damiran ve'olma v'imeru, amen. Yehe shlama rabba min shemaya, v'chayim aleinu ve'al ko Yisrael v'imeru, amen. Ose shalom v'imromav, fuya ase shalom aleinu, ve'al ko Yisrael, ve'al ko yoshvei tevel v'imeru, amen. May the source of peace send peace to all who mourn, and comfort to all who are bereaved. Together we say, amen. Please be seated. Those who saw, who saw in tears will reap in joy, will reap in joy. Those who saw, who saw. Consider spending the day in and around the temple for those who can be in person tomorrow. Every year we hear from people who have done so for the first time and how powerful it is for them. For those joining online, I pray that you can create the space that you need to feel the awe and the holiness of this day. You may refer to the Yom Kippur card for the various services and study sessions available. We have this online as well, mzion.org on the High Holy Day page. 
If you have loved ones at Shalom Home East, Cantor Spilker will again be leading services there in the morning as she led Kol Nidre there tonight. A general note about services, though you are free, of course, to leave any time if you need to, please do not enter or exit the service when the ark is open or during Kaddish. For those on Zoom or live streaming, I invite you to honor this as well. I want to say about fasting that if you are ill, pregnant, or nursing, it is not only permitted but a mitzvah, a sacred obligation to eat on Yom Kippur. And if you need a space to do so tomorrow, we will have a room available here. For those in person, please bring the grocery bags that you received in Rosh Hashanah, or any bags that you have with food for the neighborhood house food shelf in the morning. You can bring it to the tents on set up on the sidewalk on Summit Avenue to collect food. Thank you to Sporty for coordinating this wonderful drive. If you will not be with us tomorrow, please return your name tag to ushers as you leave tonight. I'll share more announcements tomorrow at the morning services about Sukkot and this coming year. For now, we conclude our service with the singing of Adon Olam, page 126, followed by the benediction. Please rise. <laughs> Yes, sir.